Greetings gentlemen and ladies, old school game snob here. In today's video I'm going to show you how to use uh, impact point damage to basically kind of knock your character back, right? Sort of like something like this. Alright, so we get shot from the front and die from the front. We want to kind of knock them back a bit, right? There you go. Knocks backwards. We get shot from the other direction. We want them to kind of get knocked forward, right? Something like that. That might be a little bit exaggerated in terms of how much force. Want them to, you know, say, you know, I got like a little minor uh, sort of explosive explosion type uh, projectile here. We want them to uh, get knocked upwardly when he, you know, gets shot from the bottom, right? Kind of up. But if he gets shot from the top, we kind of want him to get, like, knocked back, right? And... Oh, one more shot. Boom. Kind of gets just knocked back, right? Doesn't get that upward force applied if the projectile doesn't come from down below, where it would make sense to apply upward force. Right? Alright, so I think I got this basically worked out pretty well at this point. Um, after much tweaking, here's what we're going to do. Uh, on event, we're going to use radial damage. Did I say point damage? I meant a radial damage. Now uh, we're going to use a, a on event radial damage. Uh, break apart our hit info, right? Break hit results. We're going to grab the impact normal. And we're going to set the impact normal as a variable, or you can just drag the pin out. Really up to you. It's just a little bit more neat and tidy in this way. This is all just print string debugging stuff, doesn't matter. Here I'm just setting health, uh, basically subtracting from current health, uh, doing damage to the model, that doesn't really matter. That's all kind of, you know, easy, easy. Uh, but uh, here's where we now get into knocking the character back, right? So basically, when the character dies, I have my character set to enable physics, number one, on my character meshes. Uh, that is my male and female mesh, not my capsule, but my meshes themselves. I'm setting these to be a ragdoll collision uh, physics. I'm uh, disabling my movement component. This is my my uh, this is my custom plugin movement component. Uh, you you might be using character movement component uh, just default, just disabling it so the player can't move uh, the character around once they're dead or have any weirdness going on like that. But here's where the magic happens. Here's where we're going to apply the knockback effect. That is the add impulse uh, node. Uh, I'm going to be applying this to both my male and, and female mesh. Uh, and I'm going to be, uh, actually, it seems like you can do them both at once. It seems like it allows you to plug in both, do it as an array, and I think it just works. But I haven't double checked this, but I'm pretty sure that just works. So I'm just doing both of these at the same time. I'm adding an impulse. Now the impulse that I'm adding is uh, basically the radial damage origin, which we grabbed uh, from from back here. Sorry, the impact normal. I, I I guess I should rename that just so it makes more sense. Impact normal. Impact normal. I'm actually going to call that radial impact normal. All right, and I'm just grabbing that, uh, like I say, from the impact normal, putting it into a variable, so it's just a little tidier. And I'm grabbing that radial impact normal and I'm splitting it apart so I have these X, Y, and Z all independently. Now that way I can do a little bit of force um, application modification. Uh, basically I want uh, to kind of vary the damage depending on just how hard the character was hit. Right, so if that final hit was from a very powerful weapon, right, so here we have a normal hit from like a normal rifle. But if we have a much more powerful finishing blow, like this... Well, that didn't show up too well. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Oh, oh yeah, right, because I've also got normal knockback. Anyway, let's take it more from the bottom so it shows a little bit better. Oh, that didn't show up very well either. There we go. Uh, yep, there we go. So that might be a little bit too much. So it kind of depends on where the character is hit. If he hits from more down, more upward, upward half, uh, it kind of pushes the character down. If he hits from a lower half, it kind of pushes the character up. So that may not be the best when when dealing with like explosion type projectiles. You don't want them to necessarily be pushed down. So that Z axis might be modified depending on 
uh, certain things, but that's not a consideration in this setup. You'll have to tweak that uh, to your own needs, and I may have to tweak that to my own needs. But anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the radial damage received variable, which of course I turned into a variable from the event radial damage over here, set radial damage received. And I'm going to multiply that. Uh, basically what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to take the radial uh, impact damage, multiply that by a certain amount, negative uh, 3000 across the board is what I'm doing, but if you want it to go less high, like less vertical, you know, you might adjust that manually. Um, but basically, depending on how dramatic of a knockback you want, that's kind of the, the setting for that right there. But then, like I say, we're applying the projectile force itself as well into this equation. Uh, so I'm multiplying radial damage received times this number here, which is basically taking the location of the hit, doing a negative multiplication. That's because uh, we want it to go in the opposite direction. We want it to be pushed you know, forward when you get getting hit instead of like come back towards us, because that doesn't make any sense. We're basically just applying a negative force from the impact point. And then we're multiplying by damage received to make it more or less, depending on how big of a hit it was. And then we're adding an impulse on X, Y, and Z, and that's it. That's about it, actually. So that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I'm adding an impulse uh, instead of a force. I find the impulse creates a more realistic effect, so add impulse just gives a single burst of, 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 of movement, whereas adding a force applies a continuous force for a period of time. Wow. That was too much force, so I'm gonna have to tweak my upper 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 levels a little bit here. But I think you guys can probably get the idea. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you later.